<laughs> Keep sitting, sit down, okay? Wait too. I love you too. No, I love you too. I love you too. No, I love you too. <laughs> All right, baby, you crazy. My bad, that's my son. Uh, so I'm trying a new angle. Hopefully this is working. Um, what I'm getting ready to showcase you guys is actually my take on megaliths right now with the cards that I have. There's still changes I would make on the deck if I had the cards, but I'm going to show you guys my build currently based off of my resources that I have available to me. Okay, Kingston, relax and watch the movie, okay? Alright, so um, yeah, I'm getting ready. This three stacks, of course, you guys, represent the Team Kingston games. I'm getting ready to do this deck profile. Um, trying out this um tripod. So that my girl doesn't always have to hold the camera for me. So let me know feedback on the angle and stuff. I'm not sure how it's how good it's gonna come out, but you guys are gonna tell me anyways. Hey, 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 hey. You need to sit down, okay? Shh, be quiet. Watch your show. Be quiet, okay? Alright, so <clears throat> Alright, so um man, this feels different. <laughs> I'm so I'm so used to needing somebody to hold the camera for me. Okay, so um, like I said, this is Megaliths. Um, so I did some experimentation. There are some cards in here um, that are a bit non-conventional. Um, I did choose a very powerful normal summon for this deck. Um, I do understand that Diviner is a great card, but I just didn't want to soil that card that belongs in here. Bless you, Papa. Um, so you guys are going to get, um, we're going to get there when we get there, but I just want you guys to be ready and open-minded for this deck profile. Kingston, shh, be quiet. Sit down. All right, so we're going to start off with three copies of Megalith Oach. If I'm pronouncing it right, you know, if I butchered it, you know, somebody's going to go in on my head. Um, so, Megalith Ult is actually a really, really good card. This is one of your main disruptors, by the way, um, because it does have a quick effect that allows you to actually ritual summon one ritual monster during your opponent's turn. I mean, when it's, search, when it's summoned, you know, you get to draw this card. That's okay. It, it, it can be good. It can be bad. Sometimes you just want to pitch Block Dragon and fetch for a different card because Block's good in hand or Grave. So, it kind of is like an even trade-off for value. Kingston, be quiet. Um, but the best part about this card is this is your main disruptor. Um, so because it lets you summon generic ritual, like it has a generically applicable um, effect, it lets you summon any ritual. Um, there are some key cards that I put into this deck that are extremely searchable, um, that are very impactful summoning on your opponent's turn to disrupt their combos. So this deck essentially is like a control deck, but it can play very aggressively like a combo deck. It has explosive plays. It can really turbo out very frequently. And also, it does have a tendency to burn out of its resources fast because of how consistent the deck is. So, I do have some compact engines to kind of mitigate that issue to keep my grind game prolonged. Because um, you just need that longevity sometimes. Some decks just can't be beat that fast no matter how well you play your cards. Um, but Ulch is one of the main starters um, for my um, personal play style. Because the way I'm playing this deck, and I think most Megalith players are playing it this way. I said sit down or I will pow pow you. Um, the way most Megalith players are playing this deck, I think everybody knows that Ulch is like the main go-to. Um, of course, we're still playing three copies of Hagith. Um, now, Hagith actually searches for a um, Megalith spell or trap, and it has a, during your main phase, you can uh, ritual summon one ritual monster. The difference, so these cards are kind of similar. They do allow you to deck them, in addition to just summoning any ritual monster. Their defense is huge, so these are very standalone cards. You just need to kind of survive. Sometimes these can get you there too. Um, but Hagith basically lets you summon any ritual monster. You know, you still tribute, but I like that it equals Oryx Seeds, unlike Necros, where they're like, you have to exactly have the proper level. King, what did I say? I'm sorry about that, you guys. Um, you guys are just going to have to bear with it, honestly. I'm trying to tell my son to be quiet, and he won't. Um, but anyways, hopefully that doesn't impact quality too much. So yeah, Hagith is um not as good as Ulf, just because it doesn't put up disruptions. Um, but it can allow you to get to your disruptions depending on the search targets that you're playing. And there's more Megalith um, support coming out in the near future. So it's only going to get better as a card. And if you guys didn't know, Ritual Summoning is my favorite mechanic. So absolutely, of course, I'm going to be playing Megalith. Any Ritual deck out there, I'm going to test out and try to make it as good as possible. Because I think Rituals for life, baby. Rituals are the best, period. Um, and Megalith really just took Rituals to a different dimension. This is what I consider to be a very broken Ritual deck. The fact that... It bypasses the restriction of the summoning mechanic itself um, for resource mitigation, kind of supplementing, getting extra cards that you need, and also using minimum resources. When I say minimum, I mean be quiet. Minimum resources for your ritual summoning. Like legitimately, dude, minimum. I'm talking about, like, that's insane that you're not using the ritual spell, the ritual summon. That's one less card that's needed in your hand. And they have a card that lets you summon for Kingston, you want Papa? You want Papa? 
Sorry about that, you guys. Dang. This is why I don't really record or upload as frequently because like this, like I, like I have to do it when they're sleeping or taking a nap because they do affect my audio quality. Um, but you guys have kids. If you do have kids, you understand. Um, but yeah, like I was saying. Anyways, going back to that. Yeah, generically applicable effect. Um, like I was saying, minimum minimum resources. Like that's what I love about this deck is it does it kind of bypasses that with the the restriction of the mechanic. Like you normally need the ritual spell, the ritual monster, and the tribute fodder. We're getting a card that lets you actually ritual something from your deck, which is insane. I can't wait for that to come out. So no. I'm I was considering experimenting like with megaliths in Herald, but it just. It's not there, you know, it's just, it isn't there. It's not consistent enough. It really does break more than it um, works out. So I think megaliths can be more or less, you can splash stuff into megaliths and megaliths could be potentially splashed into decks like necros, you know, but I don't think that a um, megalith herald is a good idea. I tried it, trust me. Um, we have two copies of Baythor. Now this is your main disruptor. This is your go-to. Um, you can just play one and just keep looping it off the field spell. Um, but the other thing is it can be called by, it could be DD Crowed, and sometimes just having it in hand, um, it can help so that you can ritual summon more than once. Because these are, you can only use this effect once per turn. So it's not like you can use Haggit to ritual summon more than once. So you kind of need, this is like another ritual spell basically, even though it's not a spell. That's why I like is that the ritual monsters basically are the ritual spells. And in addition to them being the ritual spells, they're also the tribute fodder, which is two of the three resources required for the mechanic itself, meaning all you need is just a ritual monster at that point. So it is pretty broken, I'm not going to lie, I've never seen this in my life. I used to wish and hope and dream that we would one day be able to ritual summon from our deck and do broken stuff like this, and Konami really cares about me, because honestly, with the Viner coming out, extra foolish burial, you know, all these crazy cards for Herald, they just continue to just show love to my favorite deck and my favorite mechanic. Um, this is amazing, but this card is standalone. Um, head and shoulders above the rest of the megaliths, just in terms of disrupting. Um, you typically are going to be summoning this on your opponent's turn off Oach because it is a quickie. Uh, it has a quick effect uh, where you can activate this effect, you know, ritual summon a ritual monster, um, which is insane because summoning better on your opponent's turn whenever you feel is necessary can really just end the turn. It depends. Like if you play against a back row deck and they set four or three or four, you know, maybe five pass, depending on how many you can pop, you can potentially nuke their entire back row during, you know, um, their turn. And that's pretty crazy because traps can't be activated at the same turn they're set. So you could potentially pop those traps before they got a chance to use them. So for Alter guys, if they open all traps and no monsters, they just kind of lost. Um, and then we have um, one Artron. I kind of like him, but I kind of don't. I feel that he has a niche and he does play a proper role in this deck and he does come up. So it's necessary to still play one, but I did I just I just wish he had kind of just a when your opponent activates a card or effect, maybe in response to a Megalith card, negate the activation instead of just negating targeting. I understand they weren't trying to make it like Harold where he could just be an omni negator, which I mean nothing's wrong with making him an omni negator if you just made it hard once per turn, but the negation is it's few and far between. It does come up, but not as much as you would think to where you want to just open this card all the time, but it's still a really, really good card. It has great stats, and it does also allow you to just do your ritual summons. So, like, these are, like, ritual spells, and, like I said, they're ritual monsters, they're ritual um, spells, and they're tribute fodder. So, actually, this could be the ritual monster you're summoning uh, from your hand, or it could be used to ritual summon another ritual monster, or it could be used for the fodder. So, megaliths can serve all three purposes for the resources required for the mechanic of a ritual summon. They can be the ritual monster you're summoning, they can be the tribute fodder, and they can also be the ritual spell without it actually being a spell. So I, I just think that this deck really is broken. It has a lot of potential, and yes, it will be competitive. It will see a ton of competitive play um, when its new support comes out, because it's not a bad deck. It's really a good deck. It's surprisingly good. Most people wouldn't even think it's that good because it's rituals, you know? And then I play on one Phalic. Um, this card is really nice. Honestly, it's 300. Doesn't seem like a lot, but you can get your monsters really big, really fast. Just because of how fast you burn through your resources in Megalith, you just get so much engraved so quickly. It's crazy. Um, Block Dragon can sometimes cut this off by, you know, uh, 15. Uh, I'm sorry, not by 50, but 900. But normally you're still loading your grave so much, it doesn't really matter. And you're just going for big OTK pushes. Um, I sometimes consider it because, the, you know, this 3, 6, 8, that's an 8 star. You got 3, 6, 8, that's an 8 star. I consider it like rank 8s, but I'm still testing with the deck, honestly. And I think in the future, I might try like a whole Parvenger Titanic um, to protect my plays and, you know, like maybe fell Grand and stuff like that. You never know, but because the deck can summon rank 8s, it definitely was tempting. Um, so that's it for the um, actual Megalith Ritual Monsters. And I do play Incantations. They do really help this deck because I am playing a Compact Necros engine as well. So Incantations help you to get to either or. 
Um, I'm playing two copies of Chalice Slime. Chalice Slime is just insane in this deck. Honestly, he's one of the best cards ever printed in the game. Like, because I love Ritual so much, I look at him as one of the best cards that was ever printed. Um, anytime you can play Incantations, you must play Incantations. Who cares about Drill? Who cares about Ash? Don't decrease the consistency cards and the value for a Ritual deck out of fear of hand traps. Because for Rituals, you need to be greedy. You need to be greedy. You need to maximize on every single consistency card that you can possibly play. Because when you brick with Rituals, you literally cannot play. <coughs> it's not like when you know brick with other decks and they're just like bricking with pendulums. It's like, okay, I can pin summon too, you know? There's a difference. When you brick with Rituals, it means you just couldn't make your plays. And if you can't Ritual summon, you're just not playing. Um, so it's just really important. Uh, two child signs though, not three. You do have three preps, and you have other ways to search it. And Zaborg is in his deck. I'm just gonna spoil that right now, cause um in testing, Zaborg is literally too easy. It's so free. It's better than Geldagra in these situations, cause you plus harder. It's also better than um Diviner, cause you can pop more cards, you can get more value. So I'm playing Zaborg. That's my choice of normal summon. You guys don't have to, but in testing, it was just coming up way too much. I was like, dude, this card is like never dead. Like it's crazy. So continuing, these are more supporters. Um, so you have two Chalice Slime. I also play um, two copies of Brionic. I like to have one to just discard and search any of the Necros that I need. In addition to that, you still want one to actually summon because um, this card does actually just bounce, which is really good because if you notice, um, the removal you have is insane, but if you read Bather's effect, he does actually target and also destroy, which is kind of problematic. Now, with Rio, you will still be targeting, but the thing is you're not destroying, you're just spinning them back. So... It's just another form of removal that the that the um actual um you know megalis didn't have that kind of spot removal. You can beat over stuff with attack power, and you can normally pop cards with Bather, but if it couldn't be destroyed, you can get over it Brionic. If it can be targeted or destroyed, you have to find a non-conventional way to get over it. And the way I figured was the most applicable for this deck was actually to play Trishula. So there's more than one reason for playing the Necros in this deck. It's not just because they are good cards, but because Necros provide spot removal that my deck doesn't have, and I did not want to be in a situation where I can't get over a card. If you understand what I'm saying, like, let's say there's an Endymion, a, magi a mighty, magi mighty Master of Magic, Endymion, and he has spell counters. That means he can't be targeted or destroyed. Now, Brianna couldn't touch him in the first place unless he was, like, actually extra dead, you know, but... Trishula can bypass any of that protection. It can't be targeted. It can't be destroyed. You can Trish it. And you can also continue to add Trish from your grave to your hand with uh, the incantation pencil plume in case it comes up a second time where you need to Trish your opponent again. Um, so I just really like it. Honestly, you guys don't have to. And I know, like, it's it's not really a set in stone thing. You know, there's so many things you can do with um, uh, Megalith. That's what makes it such a great deck. But I just wanted to give my deck a strength that it didn't have and kind of make sure I decrease on the weaknesses as well. So... Necros don't really share the same weaknesses necessarily, um, but because it is a ritual mechanic and because the deck searches so much, no matter whether you're seeing um, ne uh, Necros cards or Megalith cards, you are prone to get drolled, and people are like crackheads with that card. They're so trigger happy, they're just like, droll. Um, and then we have one copy of Valkyries. Um, sometimes you need to get into your extra deck, so I like that it was, um, not only the bat it's a battle trap, it can protect you, um, because you can search multiple times and you can get this and the value for it. Um, but the other thing, because um, you just discarded the Necros card um, to you know in the battle phase. Um, but the other thing is, you want to use your extra deck sometimes, and incantations being on the field can be a problem. And sometimes you just can't like get them all off. So just sacking them off to draw is really good, and then it being a battle trap also is very necessary because you can actually summon Unicorn very easily in this deck. In fact, it's so easy, it's like unbelievable because you can summon Ulch or Haggy and just search this off of any of your imps or anything, you know, even a prep. And you could just use them to ritual summon for Unicorn and lock your opponent out, which is really good. Um, so you can put soft locks and you can put hard locks. It just depends on uh, the cards you're playing in your main deck. Um, so that's it for the ritual monsters. There's a ton of them. Um, but this is like the ultimate um, ritual medley. When I say like medley, I mean like this is like um, a salad bowl of ritual monsters. <laughs> so um, continuing, uh, we played three copies of Mega Zibor. Um, now, this card hasn't seen play in a while, you know, when um, the incantations first came out when it was just Talisman, Drain, Candle, people were playing this. Um, Necros even slowly, the Necros players even started to slowly cut this card. And more and more, this card saw less and less play, and it never really was a bad card. It had a situational purpose, and you really couldn't resolve it unless that situation, you know, you were in there when you have the resources. But Megaliths are surprisingly explosive. And when I say surprisingly explosive, you would see this ritual deck and never think it could summon Link Force like that, but this deck is really spammy, and um, it's very easy to prop off support. In fact, it's too easy. Literally, I was like, 
every hand I wish I had as a board. There's never a hand where I didn't want to board. It's just so easy to resolve. And you plus like a madman off of this card. Like seriously, it's so broken. It really, really is. Like, oh my goodness. Like he's so good. Uh man. <laughs> Woo! I wish he was a rock so I could search for my block dragon. Because he's just broke. Like, dude, going first or second, you guys really forgot how broken Mega Zabork is when you're playing incantations? Forget the fact that I plus so heavy, I'm raping your extra deck by tributing the incantations. I'm taking away all your Sunlight Wolves, you know, your Shadow Fusions, won't even have Spell of Traps in the graveyard yet because I'm going first. I'm going to dump everything. Like, this card is an, a win condition in itself, dude. Like, you guys are tripping for not playing this card. And then we play uh, three copies of Block Dragon. Block Dragon is just another support card in this deck. Um, I do believe that <coughs> this deck plays Block Dragon like so effectively. It reminds me of um, how I play Block Dragon at Gym Nights. This deck does play Block Dragon very effectively. Um, so you kind of just want to hard draw it. I was going to play like two and just do a flex spot with Foolish Burial. But honestly, I just really like drawing it. I, I just really, 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 really like drawing it. And the other thing is Foolish Burial could be Ash. So if it was my third copy, I might lose access to it. Um, so Black Dragon is just so insane in this deck. Um, I wish I had more targets like Gigantes and, you know, the um, Fossil Dino, but I do have targets in this deck anyways. In addition to the Megaliths already being Rock types themselves, you could always just search Oak and Haggit off of Black Dragon, and those cards are just insane. Just making sure you have your follow-ups for your next turn. Um, this deck is just like... Basically, think of it like when you play Christians, right? Christians are just such a good disruptive deck. Normally, their main goal is to, to synchro summon on your opponent's turn, but this is like the ritual version of Christians. Think of it that way. Because Christians can let you summon, you know, pseudo generic, and they do prop plays on your opponent's turn. Um, so, continue with your supporters, though, because this deck has just so many supporters, supporting engines that make it so consistent. Uh, we are playing Incantations. Pencil Plume is the best one. Um, as you see, I play so many blue cards. Um, Pencil Plume is hardly ever dead. If like if it's dead, you just you aren't playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Because if you don't have a ritual monster in your hand, something is really going on with that hand. Something's wrong with it. Um, but I love Pencil Plume because his effect comes up the in the mid to late game. So it comes up the least. It, it you would have to basically if you didn't finish your opponent fast enough, then Pencil Plume would start coming up. That's why you still want three. But also hard drawing hit makes it to where you don't have to burn any incantation effect to get what you need. Because typically you're gonna reveal him in any ritual monster to summon out any incantation you need. So he's basically like the starter for the engine, if it's making sense. I hope somebody who plays Imps understands where I'm coming from. So I play three Tiles Magic, because also he's live more often than not. I'm very similar to Pencil Plume. And I play two Candle and one Bookstone, because these are live the least of the time. And they're typically what you want to summon from your deck, all Pencil Plume or Tiles Mandra, because um, ritual spells are what you normally search the least and what you play the least of. I only play three in this deck. Um, but yeah, these are really good cards. Obviously, you can still use Pencil Plume to just summon Talos Manager from the deck. That's still a play. Um, and the other thing is obviously just tributing the Imps, summoning Zaborg. You get to pick the cards your opponent is sending. So then you really get to just screw their um, entire game plan over. Like, especially if it is an extra deck reliant deck like Spirals. Spirals are really just going to cry because you're going to dump their best cards. And they can, you know, loop Master Plan all they want, but... It's really hard to get Master Plan off the field if you can't link summon, right? So taking away Link 2s and, you know, certain cards like Double Helix can just be the end-all be-all. So this deck does have a crazy win condition, and it still can lock your opponent out of their extra deck even after you screw their extra deck over. If there was anything left that would threaten you, Unicorn would negate it anyways, and Valve can protect them. As well as Trish being able to protect Unicorn from targeting effects. You can still play Necros Control in this deck too, which is really cool. Um, so these are the Imps, the supporting engines. Um, now, my friend James actually gave me this idea of playing Advanced Ritual Art with normal monsters. Um, like, I've been talking to him a lot on Facebook and stuff. Shout out to you, James. You definitely did um, inspire me for this. And I give you full credit because, honestly, as much as I love Ritual decks and as much as I try to break them, I don't think I was ever going to think of this. And I will be the first to admit that. Not everybody's going to say, like, oh, I would have never thought of it. Most people be like, yeah, I thought of it. And they try to take credit. But, no, honestly, I don't know who original I did this is, but thank you so much. And also, thank you, James, for... Um, giving me this idea because this is really good. It honestly, it really is. Um, especially for summoning Unicorn, it's just it's great. Um, so I played two vanilla monsters for Advanced Ritual Art. I chose Gym Knights because Gym Knights are honestly my favorite normal monsters. They really are. They have the best artwork too, <laughs> and they're also Earths for Block Dragon, so I like them. And I could have just chose you know better stats, but honestly, I'm not playing the ones with stats for you know when I draw them to actually use them. I'm just playing the prettiest looking ones. I like Sapphire and Tourmaline. Their artwork, and then. I'm playing the Barrier Statue of Drought um, as another Black Dragon target. Like I said, I don't really have like Gigantes and other cards, and I don't have Fossil Dino right now, but I like this a little bit better than Fossil Dino because the beauty of this card is 
it can lock Salaman Greats out. It can lock out, you know, most like even Spirals to an extent. You know, they could still summon Super Agent if they call it right. But then you could bait or pop it, and then they can't attack over this. But it basically floodgates pretty much almost every deck in the game right now. But it doesn't floodgate me, and that's the thing I like. I like that it, it hurts my opponent, but does, it still doesn't hurt me at all. So having this is sometimes better than Fallout Dynamic because you can have this out, and you can protect it from being attacked over by summoning Baithor and popping the cards that they're going to attack over it with, and your opponent basically can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu -Gi -Oh. So it's the equivalent of having a Vanity's Ruler, but it's just kind of like it's a lot easier to do. You don't have to tribute summon for it. And also at the same time, like certain decks can still play under it, but it's very few and far between. And like I said, uh, typically you're going to use Baithor to protect this card, and you're going to pair it with cards like Unicorn. And if you resolve Zaybord, there's normally normally not much left that they can do. Um, so yeah, that's it for the monsters. Uh, now going in for the spells, I play on um, three preparation of rights. Um, this card's just so good, man. Like honestly, it really is. Um, I play on um, one copy of Megalith Portal. I really want to play multiples. Like, honestly, these are my Megalith targets to search. Um, you know, like, off Hagi, Hagi can just search um, for um, a Megalith spell trap. I want to play more targets because sometimes you're just playing and you're like, dang, I want Hagi to actually plus me a little bit to get cards back to my hand. But um, the only way that these cards would come up more than once is um, if they get Cycloned. I'm like, honestly, this card is, you know, it's good and I, I like it, but it's not it's not as great as it, it seems on pen and paper. If it lets you Ritual Summon, it would be even better. So this is kind of like just for the grind. It comes up few and far between for the grind. Megalith Portal is actually insane. Like, this card is very, very busted. It's so disgusting. It has diagram-like protection, and it literally is like a resource mitigator, right? You already use minimum resources to Ritual Summon in the first place, and then you're also getting extra cards. Like, dude, the only reason why I would play more than one of this is because Cosmic Cyclone is a thing and people can Cyclone it. But I'm still kind of just testing, and I don't want to play more and then end up breaking on it. So, I'm, again, it's just going to take more testing, but... Megalith Portal is just so disgusting, you guys. This card is so nice. I wish Herald of Perfection had a field spell like this. Um, and we have uh, one copy of Inception, because you still have your, your super crazy plus combo of, uh, you know, Chalice Lime and Inception. That combo is still disgusting. And then I play um, two copies of ARA. I played a realistic number, because I knew typically you're never going to resolve. You normally resolve two a game. You're never going to resolve three, because you don't even play enough targets. And typically, you resolve one, and you normally like end up in the middle of your combo sequence drawing the vanilla that was in your deck for the other one to resolve. So I just like two, because it breaks less. When you play three, you end up like top decking it and not able to use it. Even when you um, play three and you have two targets, sometimes you draw one target, and then you're only ever able to resolve one, then the other two are just dead. The only thing that they're going to be good for now is just for revealing Candle to something like, you know, Talismandra and Discard Fodder. So I played the realistic number that I knew. This is the most that I would ever resolve a duel, so that's what I wanted to play, if that makes sense. So two ARAs. <clears throat> and then um, for the extra deck, it's still under work. I still want to play like Red Gates because Block Dragon and the Megaliths just pair so well. And Valk, um, you know, can help you to kind of just sack off Block Dragon. That's what I like too, is that you can actually summon Block Dragon, use Valkyrie's Tribute Block Dragon and another to draw two and then search, which is crazy. Um, so extra deck, we played three Held of the Arclight. Um, two Oops. Um, I would play three, but I actually misplaced my third. I can't really find it. Because when you're going second, Zabor can just pop three. Um, and we play Omega to put cards back. You're dumping it off Zabor, so you can put stuff back so you can still play. And you keep value on certain cards. And sometimes you just dump... Because um, you need to dump eight, right? Because of Zabor targets itself. So sometimes you dump two other monsters just to count eight, and you still needed that. So you use Omega to put it back so you can actually summon Like, for example, Cross, cross Sheep. You play this because you plus so heavy off this deck, like, it's crazy. And you can easily prop cross sheep on your opponent's turn, on your turn, and just continue draw two, discard two. And when you have block dragon, that's even trade-off for your value. So card economy is insane in this deck. Um, we have uh, Phoenix, Trish Baina. Um, the reason why I love the top of logics in this deck so much, and I feel like you have to, have to, have to play them in Megalist, is because you can summon on your opponent's turn and trigger these non-once-per-turn mandatory effects. These are just so good. Um, just like breaking boards going second, they're good, but also setting up more interruptions. So now you can like be like, oh, okay, so your cards can't be targeted. That's fine. I'm just going to ritual summon for something and just trigger the bomber to destroy it since Baithor can't target it. Or the back rows, Trishvania, the back rows. It's just so good, you guys. Um, Opelous is pretty easy to make in this deck, and you can oppo for four. You actually can. We have Abomination because, again, you can summon cards your opponent's turn, so... When you're triggering Baithor, you can pop, 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 and then Abomination pop if there still wasn't enough. Um, they had more cards left. Um, you can easily go for Boros Orb. Um, the main thing is just clearing the incantations, but because the Megaliths can um, equal or exceed, 
you can tribute a level six plus a level four to summon a level eight because if you read them, it says equals or exceeds. So I'll show you right here. It says tributing uh, monsters from your you know your hand or your field whose total levels equal or exceed. Now you can't do a level eight plus a level four to summon a level eight. That's not you can't do that with rituals. I know that for facts because I'm a ritual like enthusiast. But you can actually use like a level five plus a level four. So. It's a lot easier to claim incantations in this deck than it is in Herald, just because you contribute more than you need to exceed the summon so that you clear them and you can summon from your extra deck. So you can go to Board Sword like a madman in this deck. I play Rank Forest because you can't actually summon them in this deck and they do come up. Tornado, Dweller, because it's it's like just the meta right now. Dweller just doo-doos all over it. And I really like Star Leech Photon Blast in this deck because it protects a lot of my guys. Um, and Phallic, if you read this card, this makes my entire board pretty much indestructible. Because this, I like this combo right here. It's not really a combo, it's like a setup. So Phallic says, all monsters. So it says right here, um, once per turn, so blah, 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 blah. So monsters, monsters, not Megalith, be quiet. Monsters you control gain 300 attack for each ritual monster in your grave. So that's all monsters. So the you summon this guy, he's already going to have over 2,000 attack. And every monster on your field is going to have over 2,000 attack. So basically, just by overlaying for him... You basically are saying if your opponent does not have some way to like kaiju him, if their only removal is to target and destroy, you literally, your entire boards are indestructible. And now everything you summon can't even be impermed or veilered. So this card's like called by the grave and it's like stops torrential. Lightning storm means nothing. It's just so good. Like you have to have to play this in Megaliths. Like you're, you're really sleeping if you're not playing um, Blast and Megaliths. And that is the deck profile, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I definitely am going to make more fine-tuning and tweaks to this deck. But right now, I love the list, and it's so freaking fun. This deck is awesome. Honestly, and it's so budget. I got the Megalith Core out of my pools from my packs at YCS Las Vegas. I didn't even buy these cards. Um, the incantations and necro stuff I already had. The only thing I had to get was ARAs from um, WePlay. So it was very, very easy to build this deck. It's super cheap, super budget. Extra deck can be budget, too. Like, some cards just aren't necessary. Um, bless you. Like, when you play combo decks, you don't always need Opelousa. Sometimes just Bomber Control is better. Like, for Spiral, honestly, I would go Bomber Control instead of Oppo. Because Spiral can chain block and make Oppo Opelousa obsolete. But they do need a lot of monsters to combo off. And Bomber can just constantly Raigeki them. Uh, which is really, really nice. Um, so, yeah. I like it. I really do. And the other thing, too, is if you um, Ritual Summon and trigger any of the, um, the Bomber, and it still wasn't enough, you have a searchable Monster Reborn that you can search on your first turn play. The emergence, you can activate emergence to trigger bomber again if necessary, so you can have double Raigeki, um, which is normally enough to just seal the deal against Spiral, because they can't survive two board wipes. Like, they're not that nice. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm going to upload it today, and this is going to be my due diligence, because uh, I just, man, I, like, I, I just need to get my own personal space for uploading so that, you know, it doesn't affect quality. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this, and let me know how you feel about the angle, um, you know, of recording. Peace.